the higher sensitization because that will contribute to the strength and other properties of the ceramics material. So now we want to we and we also know that we want densification instead of grain growth, right? Because uh, uh, densification it will contribute to the strength, but grain growth does not. So, so in uh, engineering properties of ceramics, right? The properties of ceramics are greatly uh, dependent on the microstructure. So in this here, we can see that we have a porous microstructure. We can have a mix of a uh, big and small microstructure, or we can have an almost uh, uh, homogeneous size microstructure, and we can also have see here that there is a second phase in the microstructure. So the microstructure must be controlled in order for us to achieve the desired properties in the fabricated article. It doesn't matter. Um, wait, uh, Okay, so we need to control the microstructure. So the three most common properties that is measured in a ceramic body is the strength, toughness, and also the hardness. Okay, in strength, the, the strength of engineering ceramics are uh, basically we use three-point bending strength test to measure the strength of the ceramics. That means you have your ceramics samples and you will have a three-point that will be pressed on on the sample and then you will measure the strength okay and we also have the toughness of the ceramics in simple term is the ability of material to withstand the propagation of crack throughout the body of the material so it in ceramics we often use diamond indenter in conventional hardness test to measure the toughness uh, and also hardness is the measurement of depth penetration of the indenter into the surface of the material. We can use either pyramidal indention or vitreous hardness, right? Okay, so ceramics material are very uh, unique in a way that if even though you use the same material, same methods, and you are the one preparing a few samples, there, there could be a possibility for difference in strength. Although you have you prepared 10, 10 samples, but there is a possibility for difference in strength because ceramics is sensitive to the crack, the existence of crack inside the ceramics body or the length of the crack. Therefore, these are the uh, common properties that is measured in ceramics. So grain growth is the increase in the size of grain in a material at high temperature. Okay, this occur when recovery and recrystallization when recovery and recrystallization are complete and there is a further reduction in the internal energy can only be achieved by reducing the total area of grain boundary. That means you can have two here. You have your grains here. This is that means the continuous grain growth and you can also have this continuous grain growth. Okay. So the important microstructural features are uh, size and shape of the grains, what size is the grain that is formed, the amount of porosity that is exists inside this um, uh, sample, the pore size, is the pore big or small, but of course if you want to make a porous material, ceramics material, then there will be, the pore size could be varied, or we can make a homogeneous pore. The distribution of the pores in the structure. How are the pores distributed in the structure? Is it is it located at one place or is it located throughout the samples? And also the nature and distribution of any secondary phase. So if you have two phase in your ceramics material, then how do you ensure that the secondary phase is uh, distributed homogeneously, or you just have the second phase at one part of the um, ceramics body. So this we control the properties also and how they are formed inside your ceramics materials are also important. So uh, microstructure control means that we want a high density as possible for your ceramics body and we want the grain size to be the smallest that you can achieve and also the size and shape must be homogeneous as much as possible okay? because the variation in the grain size and the uh, microstructure will lead to deterioration of the properties.
So, the final microstructure of your ceramics body is influenced by the powder preparation, how you compact your powder, and how homogeneous is your powder, what shape is your powder. And during the compaction, how do you compact it? Does it just like uh, uh, from the top, you press it down? Or do you apply pressure all throughout the mold? Right? So the grain growth and uh, the microstructure of the fabricated ceramics is basically it will influence the first step when you decide to do, uh, to do your ceramics body. You decide to choose uh, what type of powder you want to use and you have to already control the powder okay the powder properties such as the size you want the smaller size the shape the purity of the powder and this the beginning of your processing of your ceramics this the powder selection is already important to control the microstructure at, of your final body so in here we have two SEM micrograph of a sintered body at 1300 degrees C, so they are sintered at the same temperature, but one is for one hour and one is for four hours. So you can see that the longer you allow the sintering to happen, you can see that the grain growth becomes more significant. Right? And also we can see that the formation of pores are bigger than you have at one hour. Okay. So in this one, we have uh, two sintering temperature, one at 600 degrees C and one is at 650 degrees C. But we have second phase here, we have carbon nanotubes at 10% and 5 volume percent of carbon nanotubes. So let's say we compare at 600 degrees and we have 5 volume percent and 10 volume percent. So you can see that uh, the carbon nanotubes are distributed evenly right in both if more volume percent of carbon nanotubes are, uh, are incorporated then you have more in your um, microstructure and also the higher the temperature it allows green growth more green growth okay if for both um, for at, at same composition 10 percent of cnts you can see that grain growth at 650, right? So the grain are bigger at 650. So the densification of a polycrystalline powder compact is normally accompanied by a coarsening of the microstructure. As uh, our second lecture probably we say that densification, densification and coarsening can be, they use the same energy driving force to happen, right? They use the same energy, they use the same driving force to happen. And therefore, these two process densification and coarsening can be happening at the same time. Okay, so where and during the densification of polycrystal powder compact, so we have coarsening of the microstructure, and the average grain and pore size will become larger. Okay, because coarsening will let them grow. Okay, so for grain growth, there, there is two types. You have normal grain growth and abnormal grain growth. Okay. So normal grain growth means that the grain size and shapes are within a fairly narrow range and the distribution in grain size at later stage is similar to that at the early time okay, when it, it started and at the end the distribution is uh, almost the same and the grain size and shapes are not different let's say you don't have that like, too small or too big okay so that is a normal grain growth okay while the abnormal grain growth means that you have a rapid growth of few larger grains at the expense of the smaller ones. That means the bigger grains eat up the smaller ones. So you will have different size. The, uh, the range of the size is different, big. Okay? And the grain size distribution may change significantly. So therefore, you will have a bimodal distribution. So there are two types of grain growth, normal and abnormal grain growth. So it is important for you to understand the interaction between the pores and the moving grain boundaries, right? For us to explain the grain growth phenomena. So in the early sintering, let's say we have two, two grains touching together and due to the movement of the lattice and we have grain diffusion, surface diffusion, right? So we must understand how the grain boundaries move and 
what how are pores contribute to the densification of your ceramic body so a common a common approach to analyze the kinetic of rain growth and pore growth will with the evolution of the network of porosity in the microstructure so in the final stage of sintering the interaction between the spherical isolated pores and grain boundaries can be analyzed in terms of simple models so this is how you want to analyze your microstructure okay so here again i'm showing you that a high density and control grain size in the fabrication article is depending on we want to reduce the grain growth rate but we want to increase the densification or we want both so here we have three uh, particles touching each other and we can see the neck is growing and also grain boundary formation whereby you can see that the four uh, the grain boundary are moving right and also the pores are moving and finally you can see that there is an isolated pore right so you can see that this three surface becomes one pore so how can we achieve high density and control growth grain size so this is important in our ceramics uh, fabrication we want a high density but uh, but the grain size must be controlled okay you can use dopen you can use fine second phase particles you can make sure that when you are packing your powder in the earlier stage it is homogeneous you can center your uh, ceramics body with an externally applied pressure fast heating rate and the use of second phase that form liquid that is a liquid phase okay so grain growth is the term used to describe the increase in the grain size of single phase solid or in the matrix grain size of a solid containing containing second phase particle okay it has the change in size it grows bigger so grain growth occur in bone dense and porous solid at sufficiently high temperature at high temperature grain growth are more dominant so the sum of the individual grain size must remain constant that means the increase in the average size of the grain is accompanied by the disappearance of some grains usually the smaller ones okay so in porous solid both the grains and pores normally increase in size while decreasing in a number in number so when we want to make a porous solid right so sometimes the grain and pores increase in size and the decreasing in number is almost the same so there is a considerable interaction between the grains and the pores and the microstructure evolution is considerably more complex than for dense solid so and that is called coarsening process so occurrence of grain growth is the boundary is considered to be a region of disorder between the crystalline regions okay right here so you have your grain boundary here and you have your atoms here so this is a concave and convex surface and you can see that the migration of the atoms are this way okay they're moving downwards but, but it's, you can see that it's, it's going upwards right here so they are moving in this direction the atom move from the convex surface on one side of the grain boundary to the concave surface right we know that in the beginning so the driving force for grain growth is the decrease in grain boundary energy and that results from a decrease in the grain boundary so the less grain boundary that will move your atoms Grain growth in porous ceramics is also described as normal and abnormal. Okay, however, the interaction of the porous with the grain must also be taken into consideration. Therefore, the normal grain growth must include the pores remaining in the grain boundaries. The abnormal grain growth is when the boundaries break, break away from the pores, leaving them inside the grain. Okay, leaving the pores inside the grain. So the there is two main reason for this why it is important for us to control the grain growth is that the grain size of the sample 
is the major factors that control the engineering properties, right? We said it earlier. Uh, okay. Yeah, I have problems here. Okay. And also many engineering materials are improved with higher density. That means the closer you get to the theoretical density, much properties will be improved. I only tolong off a uh, microphone. Only. So please read this on your own. So when there is an abnormal grain growth, you can see that the pores are trapped inside the grain, right? So we have grain inside here. So this is not good and it must be avoided, right? Because uh, once they are formed inside the grain, it is impossible to remove them. So referring to the coarsening of precipitates in a solid or liquid medium, the higher concentration around a particle of smaller radius gives rise to a net flag of matter from the smaller particle to larger one. This is the Oswald Reining process, right? You have the smaller particles, right? And this one will dissolve and it will be dis redisposited on the bigger particles. So the driving force for the process is the reduction in the interfacial area between the particles and the medium. So two steps that can be identified that may control the rate of personing is the solubility of the particles in the medium or disposition of the solute onto the particle surface or the diffusion of atoms through the medium which is controlled by the diffusion. Also, we have topological and interfacial tension requirements here. So if a polygon with the uh, number of sides more than six have concave sides and one with and number less than six has a convex side, right? So, so when we have more numbers of concave and convex uh, sides, we know that this will influence the grain growth, right? So the effect of inclusion and dopants on boundary mobility. So we can also have dopants and inclusion present in sufficient quantities that which will have the dramatic effect on the boundary mobility. So in practice, the use of inclusion or dopant form will form effective approaches for the fabrication of ceramics with high density and control grain size. So for example, we want to look at the Zener relationship here. So we, if we consider a system with the inclusion dispersed in a polycrystalline solid, okay, and they are insoluble and immobile, okay. So, if the grain boundary moving under the driving force of its curvature encounters, encounters an inclusion, then it will help up the particle until the motion elsewhere has proceeded sufficiently far for it to break away. So, if there is a sufficient number of particles, the boundary will be pinned when it encounters the particles and boundary migration will cease. So, here we see that we have the particles, right, and then this is the grain boundary moving. Okay, so the particles are not moving. So the grain boundaries here are approaching the particle, right? Once it reaches the particle, you can see that this part is stopped by the particles and this part is still moving, okay? Right. And uh, okay, so if we have many of these particles, then it will stop the grain boundary movement. Okay, so this is the geometry or the particle grain boundary interaction. So in the Zener concept guideline, the inclusion must be smaller than the grain. So for this Zener, con con Zener effect to take place, you, the inclusion must be smaller than the grain. And for the same inclusion volume fraction, the inclusion becomes more effective with decreasing size, okay? So the smaller the inclusion is better. The obstruction to grain growth increase with increasing volume fraction of inclusion. So this may alter the properties of the matrix.
you can also use dopants to give the solute drag effect right so if we consider a system of polycholesterolized solid which has a small amount of dopants such as mgo and it dissolves in the solid solution in alumina so if there is interaction potential exists between the solute ions and the green boundary then the solid ion will tend to have a nine uniform distribution in the region of the grain boundary. So here we have the grain boundary, and this is the solid con uh, concentration, right? So grain boundaries will start to move, right? Right. So it will move, but here we have a solute drag. It will uh, retard or uh, slow down the movement of the grain boundaries. So. Here we have the symmetrical distribution of the dopant in the region of a stationary grain boundary. So in here, the grain boundaries are not moving. So here for a moving boundary, the dopant distribution becomes asymmetric. Okay, it's, this one starts to move. So this will become isometric. This is the solid uh, dopant distribution. Okay. And uh, if the diffusion coefficient of the dopants atom across the boundary is different from that one of the whole, so they are moving, right? If the difference in the uh, dop uh, coefficient of the dopants and C would be the breakaway of the boundary from the dopant, and this will leave the solute cloud behind. So this is the uh, solute drag effect, okay? So it will slow down the movement of the grain boundary. So the structure in the porous ceramic changes considerably during the sintering. So if we want to have a porous ceramics body. So if we consider a microstructure consisting of small isolated spherical pores situated, situated in the grain boundaries at the final stage sintering. So in this case, we can have two cases, right? The pores are immobile, they cannot move, and the pores that can move. So for immobile pores, the interaction between the immobile inclusion with the green boundary if the drag exerted by the pores is sufficiently high and the boundary will be pinned and boundary migration will be stopped. So if the pores cannot be moved, then the boundary migration will stop. So if the more mobile pores, this pores can be moved. Small isolated pores can be dragged along by the green boundary. So you have small pores and the green boundary and there are direction of movement here. So matter is transport in here, and you can see that the grain boundary, right here we have the lattice diffusion, we have surface diffusion, we have vapor transport, right? right? So this will allow the pore to move with a grain. So at the last stage of sintering of a powder compact, there is a showing two contribution of free energy reduction, right? Densification right here and also the growing growth of coarsening, okay? Here, right? Where the arrow show the direction of boundary movement, right? So as a summary, ceramics are composed of at least two elements, oxygen or nitrogen and metal. And these both ionic species must diffuse together to maintain the electrical neutrality of the system. So therefore, it is the diffusion coefficient of the slowest moving ion allow along its fastest path that controls the mass transfer. Therefore, controls it can control the densification during solid state sintering. To enhance sintering, the slowest moving ion must be identified. Okay, and its diffusion along the fastest path should be encouraged through chemical doping, atmospheric control, and appropriate time temperature cycle. Okay. So here uh, in this topic, we are going, we have gone through that what can you do to stop the grain growth? And what can you do to stop the grain boundary movement? You can use dopant, you can use uh, inclusion, and also how can you help to allow more densification without coarsening right some of the factors that influence is you can see the effect of temperature higher temperature and longer time will allow grain coarsening instead of densification so when you are sintering your ceramics body it is important for you to uh, get the optimum temperature and also the optimum time how long should you sinter your ceramics body so that you will not allow the grain growth. And also when you are preparing your ceramics body, it is important for you to understand that 
uh, when you prepare the powder, it's already playing parts in how you can control the finer microstructure. And also compacting your ceramics body will also play parts in your um, finer microstructure. Okay. So, uh, Auni, Auni, Auni ada masalah internet. So, Nur Aisyah ada tak? Nur Atika, Mesh, Mawara, Musim Kamil. That some of you have